level like an Egyptian. Level like an Egyptian. Walk like an Egyptian. Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. I was just hanging out in my shop trying to figure out what I want to work on next. Um, well, since you're here, might as well talk about it. One of the things that I need to do is check my lathe to see if it's still level. You see, this last winter, I leveled my uh, 13 by 40 lathe, but since then I've done some work to it, so uh, I need to check to make sure that it is still level. Sorry, Bob. One of the things about gearhead lathes is that they're just like British cars. They leak oil. There's just no way around it. And I got tired of wiping the oil off the floor, so I built a nice little oil drip pan out of 18 gauge steel. While it does a good job of making sure the oil uh, doesn't get on the concrete floor, um, I did have to lift the headstock portion of the lathe to slide it underneath. So technically it's only 18th of a gauge thick and it shouldn't have made much difference on the leveling of the lathe, but I want to double check, make sure that it is still uh, level as it needs to be. Now, if you think we're going to be using fancy stare at master precision level or other equivalent ultra high precision, aka expensive level and equipment to check the level of the lathe. Well, that's not what's going to happen today. No. Nope. We're going to do it the old Egyptian way. We're going to uh, use the minimal set of tools that we need or we have and still guarantee that we have an acceptable result. But before we talk about leveling the lathe, let's talk about what we mean by that. Imagine this is a lathe. Depending on how it's sitting, there are two ways you can level it. First, you can level this lathe perpendicular to the gravitational force of the earth. Meaning, you can, if you were to put a high precision level on it, the bubble will sit in the front, make sure it's, uh, it's the bubble will sit in the middle, I should say, so that it's not tilted left or right or front to, to the back. But there's also another you know, definition of the term level, meaning there's no twist. It is level with itself. So technically, the lathe can be tilted like this, but still within level with itself because it's not twisted. For all practical re uh, purposes, the lathe does not have to be level with the gravitational of the force really what determines the accuracy is how level it is with itself that there is no twist but there are some reasons why you may want to level the lathe to the gravitational force of the earth i mean you don't want to set things on your lathe and have it roll off because it is so out of level right <laughs> Let's head over to the lathe and see. Now I do want my lathe to be reasonably level with the earth for practical purposes, right? So today I'm going to use this super duper torpedo construction level. I know what you're thinking. You can't level a lathe with it, but hear me out, okay? I want to check to see if it's relatively level to the floor, to the earth, whatever you want to call it, just because that's what I want to do. And this is completely optional. But if your bed is like mine, uh, front way and the back way are two different elevations. 
So you can't simply put a level on there. That's where these one, two, three blocks come in handy. And it shows the lay of this level front to back. Now, let's check to see how it is from left to right. It's pretty close. Now, I feel good about that. So now let's move on to the next phase, which is checking for twist. This is the fixture that I made. It has a simple base. And a long vertical piece with a horizontal piece attached to the top. And there's a string with a plumb bob at the bottom. You can make this out of wood. Say what? I just happened to have scrap metal and decided to weld it up. Now the wooden one will have a little more flex and you have to be a little more patient with the metal you can get it done a little bit quicker. So let's set this up. Okay, we have one, two, three blocks in the front and the back. And we have the fixture roughly perpendicular to the travel of the lathe. And we just wanna let that plumb bob settle down and we'll mark on that piece of masking tape We made a mark where the plumb bob rested and we marked that with number one. Now we're going to repeat the same after we move this fixture all the way to the tailstock end. And whatever the variance is between the two, that's what tells us how much the bed is twisted. So let me move the fixture over to the tailstock and we'll see what we can find out. Okay, the fixture has been moved to the tailstock end. It's sitting on two, one, two, three blocks. And the plumb bob has just settled down. It's moving a little bit still. We're gonna have to give it a, give it a few more minutes and I'll go ahead and mark where it rested. Okay, based on where the two lines are, there's approximately one thirty second of an inch gap between the two lines. If the bed was perfectly level, those two lines would be on top of each other. But um, it is a little bit off. Denied. So since the line on the tailstock end is a little bit more forward than at the headstock, it means the bed is twisted this way. pushes the fixture top end out towards me, towards the operator, and push the plumb bob out. So that means I need to raise the front of the tailstock and push the bed back. So I'll take the wrench and give it a little bit of an adjustment. I turned about eighth of a turn. Okay, I think about eighth of a turn did the trick. The plumb bob lines perfectly with the first mark. That means there is no twist anymore. That's how you check and adjust the twist in your bed. Now you do want to make a test bar, take a turn, um, and check the diameter of the test bar at the headstock end and the tailstock end. Uh, and make adjustments to your tailstock to take out any uh, deviations in the diameters. Now, um, it was a short video, and uh, but I hope you realize that you can uh, level your uh, your lathe and take the twist out with the minimum tools. In this case, it was uh, this $10 uh, construction level. 
again, that part was not necessary either, but I just to do it, chose to do it. And all you really needed was that fixture that I made with the string and a plumb bob. So hopefully uh, this video takes some mystery out of it and you don't get discouraged because you don't have that $600 level and uh, get you uh, some confidence level to go and check your lathe. All right, thank you. Thank you for watching.